If I were to name a random country off the top of my head and ask you for the greatest novel ever written by someone in that country, most of you will have an answer ready to go. Okay? Russia. War and Peace. Uh, the USA. Moby Dick. You know, Huck Finn, something like that. Uh, Ireland. Ulysses, of course. Thank you very much. Uh, not to say everyone on Earth is necessarily going to agree, uh, but the point is most countries do have a long enough literary history that when I say greatest novel, you've got an answer in the bank ready to go. All of which begs the question, what is Australia's greatest novel? Most of you won't have an answer to that question, I dare say, particularly if you're not from Australia. You may have never really read Australian literature to begin with. I've been reading a lot of lists trying to make this video, uh, trying to answer this question. Um, and although there is some agreement, seemingly, of books that are well-loved, um, my country doesn't really have that one definitive novel um, that is regarded as the great piece of fiction that sums up our national literature, you know, like Les Mis does for France. So, today I'm going to introduce you to uh, what, in my humble opinion, absolutely fits the bill. This is what I believe to be Australia's greatest novel. It is Voss, written by Patrick White, Australia's only Nobel Laureate for Literature. Before we get into it, I think for a book to be given that mantle, uh, it needs to meet certain basic criteria, okay? It needs to be obviously very influential, um, have outstanding literary merit to it. It needs to have many layers that reward rereading. It, it, it needs to speak to themes which are relevant uh, and remain relevant over time. And it also needs to, in many ways, be a representative work of its country of origin. Uh, so basically, that's just what I've come up with. It's not definitive, there's no set criteria here, um, but I think it roughly captures what we're looking for here. Okay, so first, the plot. Uh, Voss tells the story of Johann Ulrich Voss, who is a German explorer. He leaves Sydney in the mid-1880s in order to travel into the heart of the Australian outback. Uh, at the start of the novel, he meets a young woman named Laura Trevelyan. Um, and although they are quickly separated, by his departure, they share an intense spiritual and psychological connection. Voss's trek into the interior starts off fairly hopeful, uh, but the group are completely unprepared for the stark brutality of the outback. Uh, they experience floods and torrential rains, um, arid and dry landscapes where food is absolutely nowhere to be found, and hunger, alienation, and paranoia take hold as they press on, as well as Voss's ego becomes greater and greater as they go. You know, back at the arrogant beginning of their journey, he sees himself like an ubermensch, superman kind of figure, um, you know, more powerful than God. Uh, but as the journey wears on and they begin to suffer and the group starts to threaten mutiny against him, uh, he takes on almost like a Christ-like figure of martyrdom. Voss's counterpoint is Laura, back in Sydney. Laura, being an orphan, is also regarded as an outsider in her household um, and only recognises the connection that she and Voss share after he departs. The two of them are, of course, unable to communicate physically as the distance between them greatens, but they're able to reach each other through dreams and through visions. Uh, Laura adopts a young child who in some ways becomes the metaphorical child of the two of them and also a source of redemption for them. I won't go into the ending of course because I would genuinely recommend anyone who's found this video to read this book if you haven't already. Suffice it to say, the ending is as spectacular as the rest of the novel. When it was first released in 1957, Voss won a number of awards, um, including Australia's most important literary award, which is called the Miles Franklin. However, despite Patrick White being our only Nobel laureate for literature, and this is regarded as his best work, it's still not really that well known in the wider public. I think there are good reasons for that, to be honest. Voss isn't a difficult novel per se, see my other video, um, but it does tackle some pretty big ideas. Uh, it, certainly not for everyone, but you know, serious literature doesn't tend to be. What I can confidently say though, is that it is a spectacular book. It, it honestly is. Uh, it has a driving narrative, gorgeous language, and well-rounded characters. But does that alone make it the great Australian novel? Let's review the uh, criteria that I came up with earlier. It needs to be influential. So despite me saying that it is not that well known among the general readership, um, 
it is quite an influential novel among Australian writers. Patrick White may not be a household name, but his influence, specifically the influence of Voss, uh, is seen and talked about by many of our greatest novelists, uh, people like Thea Astley and David Malloff, for example. Does it have outstanding literary merit, you might ask? Absolutely, it does. Uh, for one, it won multiple literary awards, and if that doesn't speak to that, well, then I don't know what does. But it also basically made Patrick White's reputation as a novelist um, and put him squarely on the path to the Nobel Prize, which he probably wouldn't have won uh, had he not written this book. It also needs to have many layers that reward rereading. And my God, I could make a whole video about the Christian imagery in this book alone. There's clearly a layer of religious symbolism throughout the narrative, but that's just scratching the surface, to be honest. It's also a book about ego uh, and the destructive forces of megalomania. It's also a book about social psychology and, and the power of groupthink. Laura's whole story on its own speaks to the, the class and societal themes that were relevant uh, at the time and you know in some places still today and if we really want to be simple about it at its core Voss is also a love story it also needs to speak to themes that remain relevant over time all of the above that I've already covered I think uh, are, are themes that were relevant then and are relevant now and will probably continue to be relevant 50 years from now so it also needs to be a representative work of its country of origin. I fail to see how any book could be more Australian, to be honest. There's a current trend in our national literature uh, for historical novels and for colonial era stories, uh, as well as a separate trend for books to be set in the outback or in rural communities, uh, separated from main cities in Australia. Um, very clearly, Voss has covered both of those. Uh, and many, many decades before it was even remotely popular. So that's about it, to be honest. I think we've nailed all the criteria necessary. Uh, that's my pitch. Voss is the great Australian novel. Um, it is a profoundly intelligent and brilliant and well-written book. And if there was any justice in the world, it would be regarded with the same um, stature that we give to Moby Dick or Crime and Punishment, because at least in this guy's opinion, it is of the same value. If you haven't read it, I'll say it again, read it. It's excellent. You will not regret it. And if you have any interest in Australian literature and don't know where to start, I couldn't think of a better representative for Australian literature and what we would regard as great, um, even if we don't talk about it often enough. If you have any recommendations or you disagree and you have a book you think is the great Australian novel and I can already guess some of the answers to that one. I would love to hear about it and discuss it in the comments. That's it for me at the moment. If you have any suggestions for other people or themes to do videos on, let me know and I'll add them to the list. And until then, I'll see you later.